Hi, welcome to uh, Empower Living. I just want to chat with you for a moment. We're in the middle at our church of a 21-day fast, and this week we're focusing on humility. And um, what what is that? How do we focus on humility? What does that mean? Well, I want to take you to a couple stories in the Bible. The first one is Abraham. Now, here was a man who was living with his family, living in a country that God said he needed to move away from. So God came to Abraham and he said, look, this is your family. This is where you're comfortable. You hope to have children maybe someday. This is where they would grow up. And it's everything you know. Your friends are here. Um, your farm's here. Your lifestyle. Everything you know is here. But I'm calling you to go to a place that I've not yet shown you. And I will give you children that you can't even number. And kings will come from your lineage. Now at the time, he was worshiping idols. It says in the Bible that his word or that his family worshipped idols. So here, this God, he wasn't even worshipping, he's speaking to Abraham, and he's saying, go to a place I will show you. And Abraham, is the, he's the father of our faith. You know, the, his word tells us that. And he's in the Hall of Fame chapter for faith in Hebrews 11. And it says, because of his faith, it was attributed to Abraham righteousness. Why? Because he humbled himself and said, God, I don't even serve you. I serve these idols, but you're speaking to me directly. So... I'm going to put my trust, I'm going to put my confidence in what you're saying. You see, faith is, faith is not an act. We don't, we don't work hard and push out more faith. That's just not what we do. That's, that's not what faith is. Faith is a surrendering. We surrender to the one we have faith in. That is faith. So Abraham is surrendering his thoughts, his plans, his will, and his life to God he had not yet known. That's faith. This is why he's called the father of our faith. How do we show that we have surrendered to God? How do we show our faith? We show our faith through being obedient. So it started with Abraham humbling himself saying, God's speaking to me. A God I've not even worshipped. A God I've not even known. But I'm going to put my trust, my faith, I'm going to surrender to him. And I'm going to prove and show that I'm surrendering and having faith in God by obeying him. This is how we humble ourselves. We surrender. We lay down all our plans. We lay down all of our thoughts. We lay down all of our activities. And we humbly come to God and we say, God, your ways are bigger than my ways. God, your ways are greater than my ways. I surrender my thoughts, my plans, my abilities, my talents, my relationships, my job, my children to you alone. And I'm trusting in you and what you show me in your word and through my spirit, I will obey. That is humbling ourselves. And then we also have Jesus. When Jesus went into the wilderness, he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. He was hungry. The word says that he was hungry. And the devil came and tempted him three times. And he tempted him in three ways. The same three ways we are all tempted. And these are the only three. Uh, you can boil it down to this. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And the second temptation the devil tempted Jesus by bringing him to the pinnacle of the temple. He said, throw yourself down if you are the son of God. Angels will come and bear you up. And you won't dash your foot upon a stone. Satan was quoting scripture here. And he said, get behind me, Satan. For it is also written, you should not tempt the Lord thy God. He's being tempted here with the pride of life. Because Jesus could have easily have said in that moment, you're right, Satan. I am the son of God. If I throw myself down, angels will catch me. And I will not dash my foot upon a stone. I am the son of God. And I have authority over you. He could have said a million different things. But he didn't. He submitted to God. And to the word of God. And he resisted the devil. You see the Bible says very clearly. That we are to submit ourselves to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from us. Jesus was showing this in this temptation. He submitted to God and his word. He did not tempt God. And he also didn't rise up and say. I am the son of God. By my talents, by my giftings, by my callings, by my position, by my place in the kingdom, I will do this thing. See, we, that's not humbling yourselves. But Jesus humbled himself and trusted the Lord instead. It's the same thing when he humbled himself in the garden, when he was crying and he was praying and he was, he was, you know, he was sweating blood and, and, and water flowed. And he said, God, not my will be done. See, he's being tempted to do his own thing right here, but he humbled himself. He said, not my will be done, but your will be done, O Lord. This is what we ought to do when we humble ourselves. Anytime we exalt ourselves, that's what the world does. That's humanism. Exalting self is humanism, and it only leads to destruction. It was humanism that Hitler uh, put into practice Laban's born to get a master race. 
a pure race by killing all other races. Through this mindset, this garbage of humanism, of exalting self, over 95 million people were murdered because they didn't belong to that race. Through pre-Hitler Germany, through World War I, through World War II. And it continues. You can see the same mindset in any communist society. Where one person or man's ideas are, are, are exist. See, in a communist society, the only thing that matters is material things. It's from Karl Marx. He said that the, the world was materialistic. He was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. Therefore, God's word was not authority in his life. Anytime you're not exalting God and his word as true authority, then you're putting yourself as the authority, your thoughts or man's thoughts. The Bible says don't trust a man's wisdom. Anyone who puts their trust in man, it says in his word, will be cursed. He says, don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in horses or chariots. And don't put your trust in your own ideas. Our founding fathers knew this to be the case. They quoted the scripture that says, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all else. Who can know it? And because of that, revolutionary, given by God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, came our constitution as separated powers. Never been done before. There was one in power, a king or a queen, and you were at the whim if they were good or bad. But there became a separation of powers written in our Constitution. There became a system of checks and balances. Why? Because they knew the heart was evil above all else. And who could know it? But see, that wasn't Hitler. He exalted himself. He even rewrote the Bible and took out anything talking about the Jews, God's true chosen people. He rewrote the Ten Commandments and made them Twelve Commandments, putting himself in the place of Jesus. Even having his young children in Germany, Nazi Germany, pray to Hitler. Uh, I mean, that's the ultimate part of, of humanism. But you can see this in any communistic state because they exalt self and stuff over God. Or they don't even believe in God, you know, being the way, the truth, and life. And it even happens right now. We are exalting self over other parts of humanity. It, it, it's always been the case. And, and you may not like this comment, but, but, but hear it. Christians, it's time to choose. You know, I was listening to Sunday Night Church with Robbie Dawkins. He had on there Lieutenant Colonel West. And his father told Lieutenant Colonel West this statement to live by. And I really liked it because it's biblical, right? He says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. That's what God says in Revelation. But he told him, uh, Lieutenant Colonel West was told this by his father. He says, the only thing in the middle of the road is roadkill. That's true. The only thing in the middle of the road is roadkill. Christians, it's time to get out of the middle of the road and get an understanding and line up with God's word. And, and how we combat the evils that are in this world. We have always, and I say we, I'm, I'm speaking to the ideology of the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party has always treated a part of humanity as property. It started with the slaves. They treated African Americans as property. You can see it throughout our history, go out through our legislative history, and you can see they treated uh, men as property, and that would be the African Americans. The 13th Amendment that freed slave wasn't voted for by a single Democrat. The 14th Amendment made African American citizens of the United States of America not voted by a single Democrat. The 15th Amendment, which gave African Americans the right to vote in the United States of America, not voted by a single Democrat. In fact, for over a decade after the Civil War, 24 or over 20 different civil rights laws were passed for the advancement of African Americans in the new nation, the United States of America. Not one was voted on by a Democrat. And the only reason these civil laws, uh, rights laws stopped was because the Democrats regained the House of Representatives and that put an end to it. And not a single civil rights law was passed again until the 1960s, almost 100 years later. Now, why am I saying this? Because they're still treating a part of humanity as property today, and that's the unborn. They're devaluing life by saying God does not right now, in the midst of that mother's womb, fashioning and forming that child. And you go all the way back to, to a guy by the name of Ernst Teichel, who tried to say that the embryo in the mother's womb has different animal stages of development. They have a fish stage, they have a pig stage, they have a chicken stage. Why was he doing this? Because when you're having an abortion now, don't think of it as a human you're aborting. You're aborting a pig embryo because it's in the pig stage. That's garbage. He was proven to be false and a fake and a fraud. He faked his drawings. So they took the drawings out of textbooks, but they still teach the concept. It's garbage. We are made in the likeness and image of God. And we must humble ourselves and accept that and know that and realize the value in that, that we are made in His image. And stop treating the unborn as, as, as mere property. 
So Christians, it's time to stand up. It's time to rise up. And it's time to stand for the value and the truth that is God's word and God's word alone. So I want to encourage you. Like Acts chapter 4 says, it says they prayed for boldness. Christians, we need to become bold with the word of God. We need to become bold and stand for truth. We need to not waver regardless of the consequences. They prayed for boldness in Acts chapter 4. They asked that God would stretch forth his mighty hand to heal, to bring glory to the holy child, Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm praying for today in this time of fasting. That's my prayer. And then the place was shaken. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit again. That's my prayer. That we go forth in boldness, declaring the word of God, overcoming through humility, submitting ourselves, surrendering ourselves to God, every temptation that comes our way. And that God would stretch forth his hand and bring glory to Jesus Christ through this day and age. Amen. Amen.